Welcome to the latest news story on the new organisation and first of all the name. Um, it all started with a logo that came from John Hannan, he's the guy that came up with the Calder logo so a very clever man and uh, he felt very strongly that the logo needed to be a fish egg because we're looking at rearing our own fish, we're obviously creating fisheries and the name he came up with um, basically covers all the eventualities and uh, explains that it's beginning of something new. So the name for the organisation is Embryo and the full name is Embryo Angling Habitats because we're looking at creating new angling habitats and we're looking at protecting existing ones and helping other people to protect theirs too. So uh, John Hannant's gone away and, and come up with a very flashy logo and a nice font and everything for the name. Oh, bleep on the right hand rod again. You never know, it might go in a minute. Um, basically, that's the, that's the start of something new. We, we're producing fish, hopefully, you know, later on this year and every year. Um, from now on, we're producing new fisheries. Um, so it sort of encapsulates all of that. And I hope people warm to it. And uh, hopefully people will want to wear the logo, maybe have it on a t-shirt one day to say that they're proud of the organisation and what it's achieving. And then the next really big news is I've found the person to run it. And uh, it was uh, quite a big undertaking. I didn't expect it to take as long as it did. We were absolutely overwhelmed with people applying for the job. We had some fantastic a uh, applicants. And in the end, we whittled it down to about eight really exceptional people. I could obviously only give the job to one person, so I had to disappoint a few. But without exception, all the people that didn't get the job all said that they would still help the organisation to grow and to thrive, which is very noble of them. Um, the guy who got the job is a guy called Matthew Pettit. He's a local guy. We're in uh, Cambridge at the moment. He's a local guy to this area. And uh, in a little while, I'm going to hand you over to him and he's going to give you a little bit of background about himself um, and about what really motivated him to do the job. Now, obviously, there's a lot of work at hand. And at the moment, it's an organisation of one person, obviously with myself and a lot of other people backing it up. Um, but there is a hell of a lot of work to do. We've been inundated with offers of help, requests for help, information about lakes, um, which Matthew's already following up. Even before he started the job, um, he asked for all the information about lakes and he's been contacting people that have tipped us off on places that might come up for sale or for lease or somewhere that's not being developed at all um, that may you know, benefit from our attention. So there is a hell of a lot to do and I hope people keep on offering their help and coming to us with offers of help and also with requests for help. So what help do we need from you? Well, any money that we spend on running the organisation is money that we don't spend on fencing, on new fisheries, fish, helping other anglers and helping other clubs and societies. So we want as much help as possible with the day-to-day -day running costs of the business. And the biggest expense to begin with is a vehicle. So what we're looking for somebody, if possible, to permanently loan us something that we can get some fish tanks on the back of, something we can probably put four people into, so one of these Ford Rangers or something like that. There's loads of different versions. The Hilux is another one. We're looking for a vehicle of that ilk that we can either rent on a low cost rental agreement or somebody can loan us on permanent loan or even just tip us off on a good deal for a vehicle like that because Matthew's going to be going up and down the country hopefully delivering fish to lakes assessing places that need fencing looking at lakes that we may potentially take on there's going to be a hell of a lot of driving involved and if we can cut the cost down to an absolute minimum it means more money to be spent on the things that we really want to spend it on. The second big expense where we'd like to save money is on a computer. Matthew obviously needs a laptop. Obviously we'll be supplying him with a phone and everything so he can keep in contact with anybody. And there will be a website as well that will be coming shortly. But having a laptop and something like an Apple Mac that can be donated to us is going to save us a load of money that we can hopefully spend on fish or a new lease or something like that. So if you're in the computer industry or you know somebody who is and they can give us a really good deal or even donate a second hand one for free, we would really appreciate it. Things like machinery as well are really, really important. If we can get hold of any machinery to work on lakes, to cut trees back so that we can make fencing easier, anything at all that people want to donate that's going to help in that respect, please get in touch with a normal email address or I'll pass it on to Matthew and he'll be in touch with you to see what we can do. 
And the last really big favour we need from somebody is somebody to help us actually build the website. Now we've got some brilliant designers in Darren Goulder and John Hannon, but we need somebody to actually build the nuts and bolts of it. And I see this site as having all the fisheries that we hopefully control one day on it, all the rules and regulations about those fisheries, how to join, how to apply for membership, plus all the details of the lakes that we've helped, the fences we've put up, showing people how to put fences in and putting them in touch with people that can do it for a really low price. So it's going to be a real hub for new fisheries and also for helping existing fisheries. We've already bought a domain name and that's embryoangling.org. There'll be a few other domain names as well that we're going to buy basically to try and get as many people to come to the site as humanly possible and I hope that one day it's a massive hub for angling in general that is a wealth of information on all different subjects. So if you're actually a web developer and you can write the code to make the site please get in touch with us on the normal email address which is elaine at calder.co.uk obviously there'll be email addresses for the new website as soon as it's set up and also if you've got any areas of expertise where you think you can help this organization please go through to that same email address and offer your help. We've already had solicitors get in touch with us. We've had people with haulage companies. We've just had people that want to push a wheelbarrow and just want to help out in certain parts of the country. If you fall into any of those categories, please get in touch because the more volunteers we've got, the quicker and cheaper we can get things done. And then finally, and this is a very big ask, we're looking for some land. Basically what we want to create is a load of stock ponds because Simon Scott and Viv Shears at VS Fisheries have been kind enough to pledge some fish to us when they do all their grading in November this year but at the moment we've got nowhere to put those little carp. So we need to be able to dig some stock ponds that we can drain down easily. So if they're on a slope, that would be absolutely perfect. If there was a water supply nearby, that would be absolutely perfect as well to help fill them once we've drained them. But most importantly, we just need some land where we can actually dig some stock ponds so these fish don't go to waste and we start a chain of fish that are growing on, growing on every year. So hopefully as we get more fisheries in the future, these fantastic VS fish are big enough to go in there they're cormorant proof, we put a fence around the lake they go in so they become otter proof and we create new fisheries for the future. So if you've got land that is secure, that can be monitored, preferably in the Midlands area because if it's close to Matthew that would be brilliant because he can monitor that on a regular basis. But if it's not there and you think it's the perfect site, please get in touch with us, we're absolutely all ears. So I'll hand you over to Matthew now and he can give you a little bit of background information about himself. He can tell you what motivated him to actually apply for the job and what are the first few things that he's going to attend to as soon as he starts in a few days time. My name's Matt Pettit, I've um, been fishing my whole life. Um, fishing started off fishing the, the rivers of Northamptonshire, had the net in my back garden. I uh, started, you know, fishing for stone loaches and just worked my way all the way through to the sort of big carp thing that I do nowadays, really. Um, it's a complete obsession in my life, my fishing, um, the absolute sort of grounding thing in my life, the thing I look forward to the most outside of family, and it's something that's really important to me. I th the thing that made me apply really is um, I'm actually based in, in the Cambridgeshire border and um, really over the last six or seven years I've seen firsthand the impact of uh, otter predation. Um, going back prior to that time I'd, I'd never seen an otter in the wild um, to the scenario where we are now that pretty much regardless of where I go I'm seeing predation. You know, the, all the pits that I fish have got otters on. I see them most times that I go fishing. And many of the, the sort of prized fish over the years have been removed. Um, even on occasion where those fish, you haven't sort of found carcasses, it's very clear that they just disappear. Um, and what you're seeing at the moment, the, uh, just looking around where I fish, um, a lot of the a lot of the lakes in the area are gradually just becoming less and less viable. You know, they're all, generally speaking, big low stock pits with, with a handful of fish in and from one year to the next there's less and less to fish for to the point where, you know, your options are reduced drastically, you know, from one year to the next on where you can actually go to enjoy a bit of fishing. I'm genuinely worried about the future of the sport and it's something that I really want to proactively get involved and, and help help improve our prospects really, which is what this is all about. The thing that excites me most about the job is that opportunity to set up and get fisheries going for the future. That is my big passion about it, is that 
you know, we all know where it's going at the moment and it's, it doesn't look great and it's just that op opportunity really to turn it round and give the sport as many options as we possibly can for everyone in the future. And it's, I think, I, you know, I've sat there scratching my head, you know, in the build up to this prior to this announcement and role and everything else about, you know, how can I make a difference? And I see this role as being key to making that difference in the future as actually getting it all off the ground, protecting what we've got already, making as many places safe as we can for, you know, sort of safe and established fisheries. And then, like I say, building, building on that, um, developing options for the future. And I think that is, that's the key thing for me, um, you know, just protecting the existing stocks we've got and just giving ourselves options for the future. I can already see the work piling up and that's a good thing. I'd like to thank everyone for the interest. It's really appreciated and responding to people, letting them know where we are with things and, and really just just getting our heads down and, and going through that. That's that's clearly the first thing. We've, we've got piles of information from people who want to help, you know, and are going to be getting back to everyone around that to, to accept those offers and to try and organise who we've got where. And then, of course, you know, the other thing is all the leads that we've had from people. We've got so many to, to look at and go through, and it's really sort of having a, a look through those to get back to people, to get as much information as we can from people. And yeah, that's, that's where we're going to be from, from day one, really. That's, that's my main priority starting, is to, to start getting my head down and, and getting into that information and sorting through it. My vision at the moment to, to start with, I think a lot of my time is going to be spent both organising things around the, the fencing of, of waters and that whole organisation of um, where we're going and what we're doing. That's clearly going to going to be quite time heavy. Um, clearly we're going to be putting as much time as I can in in researching waters, trying to get information on waters, you know, approaching landowners, lease owners and really sort of negotiating as hard as we can to, to get as many options as we can to make this this as viable out of the gate. Um, so they're they're sort of two of the big big things that I see to start off with. Certainly for me I've uh, within my own fishing uh, I've not always been fishing inland seas you know I've, I've been there fishing the kind of places that most of us go to on a Friday night to get a few bites and that's certainly the, the kind of focus we're going to have in in terms of the waters we're looking at clearly we're not going to be getting three miles of otter fencing around a single lake you know we've got to be realistic and provide options for people so um, I can certainly remember those days of fishing those kind of waters and want to make as best as we can really with those kind of setups you know for for the every man really, for the for the kind of guy who can, you know, he gets his Friday night and wants to go somewhere relatively quiet where he can get a few bites and a and a bit of peace and quiet without having to worry about sort of catching fish with, with their tails missing.